SMT Nation, we are going to do an AT&T networking spotlight today with this video. I want to share some general networking stuff with you from the Big Blue Network, aka the Death Star. And along with that, I also want to show you an ongoing N77 C band 5G Plus upgrade. But first, I want to kind of do the introduction as just a precursor, only because I think some people may not know some of this stuff. So just help you get educated and informed on it. We're going to be doing this analysis here with AT&T. Let's start first with what type of licenses they hold. For those of you unaware what these licenses are, these are the ability to have certain types of radio frequencies transmitting and broadcasting from tower sites. You need to own licenses in these frequencies, and then you put up radio gear, so the radios, the antennas, and then you can connect cell phones to the network. Okay, so what AT&T has is 50 megahertz of low band frequencies. What we're talking about here is they've got 700 megahertz, which is band 14. They also have band 12. And I do believe they also have some 700 megahertz that's band 29. Uh, but it, that's a little different because it's not paired spectrum. But let's just move on and kind of go to this other stuff here. This is the lower mid band frequencies, the 80 megahertz. That's their band 2 which is 1.9 gigahertz frequency. And then they have band 66, which is 1.7 and 2.1 gigahertz. And then what we're going to be emphasizing today is this right here, the 150 megahertz of dedicated mid-band in the 3 gigahertz range. This would be the 3.45 gigahertz DOD spectrum that was just auctioned. And that's just C-band, it's N77. They also have previously from a previous year uh, the spectrum auction with that was big the the original C band spectrum auction 3.7 gigahertz. Now in terms of how much of each they have, they have 40 megahertz of the 3.4 gigahertz, and then they have I believe 80 megahertz of the 3.7. The radios that they're going to be trying to figure out what they're doing there with those two frequencies. You know, that that remains to be seen how they execute that. Are they going to put up one single radio? Are they going to put up two radios? Here, they're going to be putting up two radios for now. I'm not sure when we're going to be seeing a single radio doing both of those frequencies. We'll see. And they have 1,100 megahertz of millimeter wave. Anyways, let's focus here on the 150 megahertz, uh, this, this three gigahertz frequencies. I'm going to show you guys a tower upgrade that's here in this area. And just so you guys know, I am in the Cleveland market. Uh, also, sometimes I believe they refer to it as the Cleveland Ak Akron market. It essentially occupies, here's like Cuyahoga County. Okay, it essentially goes out like this. Okay, and it runs down like right outside of Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Once you get over here, you're in Medina County. Once you get out here, you're in Lorraine County. Once you get out here, you're getting into like the Lake County area. All right, so this is, I don't know, if I remember correctly, it's like PA number 14. We essentially have like 4 million people in this in this region. So it's a pretty big PEA with a lot of people. All right, so they need a lot of tower sites. They need a lot of spectrum. There's a lot of area to cover. Once you kind of get outside of Cuyahoga County, things are kind of ruralish, more spread out, more suburban, traditional suburban, small towns and stuff like that. But I want to share with you guys the upgrade uh, that I just caught in the works. Okay, so this is a tower site that I actually highlighted on my channel before. But I didn't highlight it for AT&T. I highlighted it for Verizon. That upgrade is actually here behind the tree. And it's the second from the top. Uh, I don't think there's any radio gear under Verizon. But at the very, very top, you will see that's the AT&T rack. And that rack has all types of goodies on it. All right, now, I can't really zoom in with clarity. The resolution isn't great once you zoom in. But I was able to get better pictures from distance. But this is what you're kind of looking at. So like this set of antennas with the radios behind it is doing all the low band, all the PCS, AWS, the band two, band 66. You probably have two radios there and then you have those frequencies. And then um, I forgot to mention also band 30. How could I forget the WCS? Uh, they have like 10 megahertz paired of that. Uh, but this one here, this right here, this is a radio antenna all in one. This is Nokia gear. This is the three gigahertz frequency that's going to be broadcasting from here. It's got its built in radio and antenna all in one. All right. Now I'm going to give you guys a better view. I'm going to show you a couple of things here. 
Here's a nice quality picture of the AT&T rack with all of its gear. And then here behind the, in the bottom here behind the tree, you will see that's the, the Verizon upgrade. And the Verizon, what they did was they put up a CBRS band 48, 3.5 gigahertz radio and uh, an antenna. And then right next to it, to the left, is the N77 C band 3.7 gigahertz. Um, just so you guys know, Verizon has 60 megahertz of this live, the C band N77. They're doing 30 megahertz of the CBRS band 48. And then all their other stuff is on this gear here. You'll have two radios, a low band, a mid band. And, um, you know, they broadcast all that other stuff, band 13, 700 megahertz, band two, you know, uh, band 66, all that stuff is there. So that's what's on there for Verizon. That was completed about eh, two months ago. And then they had some, uh, you know, they, they had some setbacks. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. The transport's done. The company that ran the fiber that's doing the fiber, whoever was doing the installations, you know, and all that they've been done. So I'm not sure what the holdup is. Actually, by the way, you can see the guy up there working on the tower site. If you guys can look real close, he's up there. All right. So um, so Verizon's done with their upgrade. That site's still not on, though. Like the actual upgrade, uh, the N77, can't connect to it. The Band 48 LTE CBRS, that, I can't connect to that either. Uh, but at and is up there. And, and guys, I don't know if you're seeing these upgrades. They actually do them faster than Verizon. I don't know. Whatever at and has in place whatever their systems are and, and their gear and securing the the supply, they're doing these upgrades in like two, three days and they're transmitting and broadcasting in like another two or three days. Meanwhile, Verizon, I've seen so many sites with setbacks, months of delay from start to finish and actually being live. So this, I would not be shocked if C-band for AT&T is live and I can connect to it before Verizon, even though Verizon has been done with this literally for several weeks okay i'm gonna see if i can get you guys some another picture so here's the verizon gear there's the uh all the the lte stuff there and including band 5 for 5g i forgot about that band 5 850 megahertz uh here's the cbrs gear this is samsung's gear uh and then here is the um the the c-band stuff and i'm not sure if all the connections are even there yet they might be waiting on parts it's very possible but I'm not connecting to either the CBRS, which is the smaller one, or the um, the C band here. All right. So last thing to show you, I, I just want to give you guys a good look. You'll see the the two workers there. There's one here in the middle, and then there's a, a second one back here. But you'll see they are getting stuff plugged in. All right. So here is all of your pre-existing gear. I believe all this stuff was up here already. The only thing that I think was changed was this one. I think this one is new. I think because I don't remember, you know how like they've got this little split there in the middle, uh, those antennas in there, you get, they're big, right? So they got to fit a lot of it, but you could see the radios here. Uh, they're all they're They look like they're all connected. They're ready to go. They're, they're moving quick. Uh, this is the N77 for AT&T. And this is actually, if you guys can kind of get a good look, this is what Nokia is for, for this, uh, for for the C band, there's a Nokia market for them. They're using Nokia. Uh, Verizon is using Samsung in my market. I believe T-Mobile is also using Nokia for their 2.5 gigahertz N41. This is what you're looking for if you're looking for new capacity upgrades for AT&T and you're in a market uh, that has Nokia gear. So here are the radios. You guys will see. Here's one here. Here's another one on that side. Uh, they're plugging up some stuff right there. Uh, here's some more gear on that. And that's that's what you need to see. You need to see what type of radios are going up. And you'll see that all the antennas are all anchored. They're ready to broadcast that signal uh, and get busy. Really, really good stuff. The antennas and the radios all going up. And this site, like I said, the fiber is done. It's, completely, it's completed. The, the transport company did their due diligence. They got paid. Everything's great. It's completed. Now it's up to the carriers to put gear here. So Verizon and AT&T doing their part adding capacity to this site. Uh, T-Mobile's site, where would it be relative to this one? T-Mobile's site is about a mile south of here, of this location. I'm trying to think of where the other one is. There's also a T-Mobile site that's about a mile northwest of here. All right, so Verizon has the tightest tower grid here. AT&T is decent. T-Mobile seems to have the trouble when it comes to tower spacing, this is why their handoffs are very 
troubling and why, you know, I have trouble with like FaceTime audio, FaceTime video, live streaming on mobile. It's very difficult to do for T-Mobile because their tower spacing is not great. Uh, they're far apart. You know, you're left with a low RSRP on band 71 and it's not great. And then meanwhile, these towers are so close for AT&T and Verizon, they hand off mid band. You know, they don't even need much low band for that connection. It's really that handoff. It's it's pretty much seamless for Verizon. AT&T does decent, too. Uh, that seems to be T-Mobile's weakness. Anyways, I wanted to show you guys what these upgrades look like, what to look for. This is what you want to see. By the way, pictures, images taken on the Google Pixel 6 Pro. Let me know what you guys think of the quality of the images. Let me know what you think of the gear. You guys seeing stuff like this, be on the lookout. Comment down below what you're seeing from your carriers and your market and uh, what you think of this upgrade. If you appreciate this deep dive into the network and an example of an upgrade, you know, uh, thank you for watching. Just show your appreciation by liking this and sharing this. That helps out the channel a lot. Uh, big thanks in advance for that. Um, go ahead and, um, you know, sound off and give me your thoughts and opinions on this. I really do want to hear what they're doing out in your market. at and is super busy in my market. Verizon is very busy too. T-Mobile's kind of been slow. I haven't seen much in several months. Uh, maybe they'll get get to go in here towards the end of the year and add some more upgrades uh we'll see all right guys thanks for watching uh links in the description for a bunch of stuff that's going on the patreon page the email address and also my twitter handle thanks for watching see you on the next video peace